Hello, today you are going to see what other people think of these little diode lasers. I got a friend of mine, Tracy, she makes book nooks and she does a spectacular job on them. And I thought this laser would be a great idea to have her review it instead of me because that way you get different opinions on what other people think of these things. Stay tuned and let's show you how this all works. When Ben asked me if I'd be interested in trying out the new 10 watt Ray 5 laser engraver by Longer, I jumped at the chance. I love making miniatures and in particular book nooks and the two pricey tools that everyone in the book nook community are always talking about are laser cutters and electronic die cutting machines that can cut chipboard and thin wood. I happen to have a Glowforge CO2 laser as well as a Cricut Maker so I was really interested to see how the Ray 5 would compare to those two machines. So the first thing I needed to do when the box arrived was assemble the unit. And um, it took me about an hour, <laughs> but that's mostly because I didn't realize that they have a very thorough assembly video that you can watch. I was trying to put it together using the IKEA-like instructions that came in the box. Um, I think that if you watch the video first, you should be able to assemble it in about half an hour without any issues. Some notes before we dive right in. The Ray 5 comes with some free software that you can use with it, but I opted to use Lightburn because I like how easy it is to use and it's got a ton of features. Secondly, I did not use Air Assist at all for any of the tests that I did, although I would like to try adding it in the future and see what that does to the performance. Lastly, I opted to buy a honeycomb tray to use with this unit. It's not necessary and it doesn't come with one, um, but if you want one, you don't even have to buy one because Ben has done up a video showing how he made his own and he's even provided the files for free. Link in the description. I know one of the big concerns that people have when they think about adding a laser cutter to their home workshop is safety. Longer's got a number of safety features that they've built into the Ray 5. The first is flame detection and alarm. If the machine senses any flames, it will automatically shut down and a continuous alarm will sound. More on that later. Uh, the second thing that they've built in is move protection. So if the machine is tilted or displaced, moves in any way, the laser will automatically stop. Unfortunately, the movement sensor doesn't work very well or else it's defective on the unit I got. They've also got motionless protections, so if the laser stops moving for 15 seconds or longer, it will automatically shut down, as well as the power button that shuts the whole unit down is right on top of the control box in the front, so it's pretty easy to just push that if you need to stop the machine suddenly. A cool feature that I wasn't expecting is that there's actually three different ways to control the Ray 5. You can connect a USB to serial cable to control it from your computer, or you can put your files onto the micro SD card that they include and control the jobs right from the touch screen that's on the front of the machine. It's a three and a half inch touch screen and it's pretty easy to use. Lastly, you can connect your machine to your Wi-Fi and control it from either your phone or your computer. First problem I ran into. After I did my first set of test cuts and engraves on some 1 8 inch Baltic birch plywood, I noticed that the lines weren't completely meeting up and everything was sort of skewed. Um, the reason for this is that the X and Y axis weren't completely square. So uh, there's some belts that run on either side of the frame as well as some wheels that clamp on the top and the bottom of the frames. So I spent a lot of time fiddling around with both those things, tensioning and retensioning the belts, tensioning and retensioning the wheels, and none of it was working. And then I realized that there is a little silver bar that runs under the x-axis that actually has the gear teeth that the belt uh, connects with. You can loosen the screws on either side of those to turn the teeth to bring 
everything into alignment. So loosen the screws on those, loosen the belts, brought the x-axis forward till the wheels were meeting up at the same point on the rulers on either side and then tightened everything back up and that fixed the problem. Second problem I had was with the flame sensor. Um, I was using the machine for about an hour, two hours total over a couple days and then suddenly the flame sensor started triggering and when that happens the laser head shuts down and an alarm sounds. I thought maybe the machine had gotten overheated because there definitely weren't any flames. Um, so I shut it down and let it cool down for about an hour. However, when I tried to use it again, the alarm was continuously triggering. So I contacted Longer and they said that I needed to check and see if the sensor was faulty. It's a little, um, almost looks like a black LED that's on the back of the control box. They told me to cover that with some opaque tape and see if the machine would run, and it did. So I knew that the sensor wasn't faulty, it was just very sensitive. Uh, they told me how I can turn down the sensitivity settings for the flame sensor, which I tried a number of times, but I still couldn't get it to stop triggering. So I opted to just keep that sensor covered because I was with the machine every time that I was cutting or engraving, so I knew that I could stop it manually if I ever did have any flames. I made sure to test all of the materials that I typically use in book nooks. So lightweight chipboard, medium chipboard, cereal box, and cardboard. For woods, I tested 1 16th inch base wood, 1 8th inch Baltic birch plywood, and some 1 8th inch high density fiberboard. Last but not least, I tested some EVA foam, which cut and engraved like a dream. And then I also tried some black foam core board, which I was a little bit scared to try, but Ben assured me everything would be okay, and it cut surprisingly well. Look at those clean edges. I want to make special mention of the kerf on this machine. It is so tiny compared to what I'm used to. The kerf on the Ray 5 is 0 0.06 millimeters, whereas on my Glowforge, it ranges from between 0 0.2 millimeters to 0 0.6 millimeters. So it's quite a big difference. Well, here is where you can see that the kerf size really makes a difference. This was engraved on my Glowforge, and this one was engraved on the 10 watt Ray 5. This one is so much sharper and crisper and nicer than this one. Now let's talk about performance. I was really pleasantly surprised at what the 10 watt Ray 5 could do. It cut through my 1 8 inch Baltic birch plywood and my 1 8 inch high density fiber board in one pass with no issues. And that's without air assist. Um, does it take longer than using my Glowforge? Yes. I compared a bunch of different cut jobs to see what the time difference would be like and um, the Ray 5 was anywhere from two to four times longer. Is that a deal breaker? Not necessarily, especially when you look at the cost comparison of a CO2 laser to the Ray 5 laser engraver. The CO2 lasers are thousands of dollars and up and a lot of people can't afford that. And instead, they turn to the Cricut Maker or the Silhouette Cameo to cut chipboard and thin wood. A job that would take me about 20 minutes to cut on the Ray 5 out of chipboard would take well over an hour on the Cricut Maker because it's gotta make 16 to 25 passes depending on the job. And you can't cut anything intricate with it. It just will shred the chipboard. When you look at the cost of the Cricut Maker 3, plus the strong grip mat that you need, plus the knife blade and knife blade housing, it comes out to about $429 US at the time of this video. And the 10 watt longer Ray 5 is currently selling for $459 US. So 
it's pretty comparable and you get a lot more power and functionality out of a laser engraver. Something that you will need to consider if you're thinking about getting the Wraith 5 is that it's an open frame machine. So it doesn't have any um, enclosure or exhaust function. So you need to be able to cut somewhere that's very, very well ventilated or ideally outdoors because you do not want to be breathing in the smoke and particulates and fumes that are coming off of the machine when you're cutting things. So that might be a deal breaker for some people. However, Ben is working on a solution for that. So stay tuned. Okay, so like I said, Tracy does amazing work. Have a look at some of these photos of some of her past work and of the book nook that she has made for this episode. Um, every time I'm blown away by her work. Uh, beautiful is an understatement for a lot of the stuff that she does. So you can see that this laser maybe has some of its issues, but for the most part, bang for the buck, you really can't beat it. It's like anywhere from about a 10th to a sixth the cost of what you would spend on a CO2 laser. And in some ways it outperforms the CO2 laser. Maybe something you should look into. As per usual, social media links and stuff are down below. Uh, affiliate links for the laser should you want it. And uh, also check over here, over here somewhere. There's gonna be a pop-up showing some of the other videos that I have for using lasers and to what to do with lasers. Anyways, I'll talk to you guys in a bit.